Howdy losers, my name is Breezy Bones and you can call me Bree. In this video, we are making a story about Fischl with AI Dungeon. It should be pretty funny and cool, so you should totally stick around for it. You should totally subscribe if you haven't already, and if you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. It would help me out a lot. Check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash breezybones. Thanks for watching. I put that we wanted a fantasy world, and I also put that our character was going to be a princess because official is the princess and after all and of course I named her official so we're just gonna start reading the story so here's what it gave us you are official a princess living in the kingdom of Larion not sure if I'm saying that right but we'll go with it you wake up in a big feather bed and hear clamoring outside your door a knight rushes in to tell you that the kingdom is being attacked by a swarm of undead you rush outside to see the undead horde approaching we're gonna lose this battle, the captain shouts. Call everyone to the wall. Okay, what would Fischl do? Okay, you send your crow into battle. <laughs> you send a crow to scout ahead. The undead horde makes their way past the barbarian tribes. They are creating a path of dead and destruction. Your scout returns <laughs> with terrible news. You strike the horde with lightning. <laughs> you thrust your hand out and unleash a blast of lightning. It strikes the front ranks of the horde, but unfortunately it hits the- it hits a group of wagons. Okay, so the bad news is we just killed half our people. Do we care? A little bit. <laughs> you go down to hell. Oh god. <laughs> Losing control of the lightning, you strike a tree. You fall down and break your legs! The undead horde finally reaches the walls of the city. They begin to scale the walls using ladders. <laughs> what? When I said go down to help, <laughs> I did not mean to fall down and break your legs. What the fuck? No. Oh my god. We just broke Fischl's legs. What do we do? Um, you fly away to save your own skin, leaving your people to die. <laughs> As you are flying away, you see the walls being scaled. You hear the sounds of combat and death everywhere. Okay. At this point, we're going to feel bad, right? Well, they think we abandoned them. Okay? They think we abandoned them. Here's what we're going to do. You turn around and drop bombs on the horde. You swoop down and release a bomb that explodes in the midst of the horde. Unfortunately, your bombs don't stop the undead. In fact, they continue to scale the walls. What the fuck? Ugh. I'm getting angry. I'm getting pissed. What is this? Hmm. You fly down and spray gasoline on the horde. You light it with a match. Unfortunately, the inf the flammable fuel ignites. The wall catches fire and the wooden ladders burn. Okay, so I just screwed over my people again. <laughs> We're like the worst people ever. Oh my god. You flood the horde. I hope it knows what I meant when I said that. You send a group of kids. <laughs> oh my god! You send a group of kids to start filling up moats and ditches with water. When the undead horde is in the middle, you flood the area. Why do, why do we send a bunch of kids though? You fire a barrage of arrows into the horde. You hit several undead. Unfortunately, you also hit several allies. You've lost several people. You've got to be shitting me. Oh my god. They must think I'm like the worst leader in the fucking world. You take your sword and stab it through the neck of an undead. The sword pierces flesh and bone with ease. Blood spurts out of the monster's neck. You call upon your magical bird, Oz. Suddenly, a magical aura envelops you and your weapons. An aura that invokes Oz, the great wizard of the east. <laughs> you draw your sword and throw it to the ground. What? Why? You ask Oz to kill the undead. As you call upon your ancient ally, you see him appear in moonlight. He motions you to follow him with a smile you comply. It doesn't sound like we fixed the problem. 
You ask Oz to take your people with you. You follow Oz in the <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I guess our people are fucked. It doesn't really matter anymore. You follow Oz into the trees. He leads you to a clearing and stops. You see that he is pointing at a man-made mound. It appears to be a pile of dirt and stones. You dig up the pile of dirt. You notice a small carved stone at the top of the, of the pile. You pick it up and examine it. What is this, you ask? It's a button. Press it, Oz says. I mean... <sighs> You press the button. <laughs> oh my god. The mound begins to rise. Inside you see a lever that can be used to open the city gates. That's it? You say. That's the start of it, Oz says. I'm confused if we op if we open the city gates, won't the undead definitely kill our people? Whatever Oz says goes. You pull the lever. The lever pulls down, the gates open, and you feel a surge of energy. You throw several knives into the neck of a zombie, you stab several fears and <laughs> you stab several spears into skeletons, you press your sword to a ghost's throat and push. The ghost disappears with a pathetic scream. Okay, I guess we're winning. You check on your people. You check on your allies. Arrows protruding from the bodies of your allies. Oh yeah, that wasn't me at all. <laughs> you notice they are alive. With a sigh of relief, you see that only a few of them are seriously wounded. You ask Oz to heal your allies. <laughs> A flash of light engulfs you and your allies. When it fades, your wounds have healed and you are back to full health. We have to stop them, you say. You bow your head in gratitude and joy. Thank you, Oz, you say. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Olive says. Oz turns to Olive. Who the fuck is Olive? What? I guess it's one of my people. I'm such a great princess, aren't I? I, I spelled doing wrong, sorry. I sent it too early. Anyways. You ask all of how they're doing. We're holding our ground. We've only lost a few good people, but we still have a lot of people left. Olive says, we can take care of the problem. I guess it all worked out. You go celebrate. <laughs> oh God. You begin to walk into the city alone. You follow the road and walk through the barricades of cars that blocked it. Eventually, you get to the front of City Hall. You throw a party. <laughs> you walk into the front entrance and see several people celebrating. Some are drinking alcohol, others eating snacks, and many are just chatting. You grab a beer from the- What? No! <laughs> no! Bishel's a minor, how dare you. Put the beer back. You put the beer back. You don't want to get drunk, but you can't deny that there is something relaxing about drinking at a party. You walk through the hallways and rooms, smiling at everyone and talking. Good. Good. Fischl's not drinking. No. You ask Oz to join. Thanks for letting me join, you guys. This is a lot different than being all on my lonesome, Oz says, joining you. You start a food fight. You grab several bags of kettle corn and drop them over the heads of your unsuspecting victims. They scream in surprise and anger, but don't move. You laugh at them. They grab handfuls of the popcorn and throw it at you. You drop the bag of popcorn and laugh. Ha ha, you're not going to beat me over the head with popcorn. <laughs> That's such a nonchalant thing to say. Like, it's so specific too. Just imagine you're in a food fight and every time someone throws something at you, like, if they throw a piece of chicken. You're not going to beat me over the head with chicken. You drink a shrinking potion. You quickly down the shrinking potion and feel yourself get smaller. Ha ha, I shrunk. You look around and see several other people drinking the shrinking potion. <laughs> you run away to a nearby town. 
You run to the closest town, which is several miles away. You start shrinking the moment you enter the village. You pass by a bunch of sleeping peasants. You electrocute the peasants' ankles. You move into a nearby window. You look out across the village and find the nearest peasant snaking about and not looking at all alert. You start to think of a way to stop them without using violence. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess we're not using violence. Um, you throw a bag of potatoes at them. You move back into the window and reach into the bag of potato bag of potatoes for one. You pull out one of the potatoes and slowly toss it at the unsuspecting peasant. <laughs> you scream giddy up at them. You look down at the peasants and start screaming in annoyance. They jump up and start quickly looking around. They run and throw themselves on their horses. <laughs> you laugh at how adorable they are when the shrieking starts. <laughs> what? You throw llamas at them. You reach down and grab a few of the smaller llamas and throw them at the peasant. The shrieks are now interspersed with the sounds of the animals <laughs> that you Oh no! You go down and talk to them. You jump down and walk towards where the screaming is coming from. There you see the size of the potato llamas! <laughs> the potato llamas! We have created a new species. Uh, there you see the size of the potato llamas, a doe, and several other animals you've never seen before. I'm here to help, we say. You ask them what you can do to help. You question the animals about the city. No, not the animals. The people, you dumb shit. You question the animals about the city. They say that there is a group of bad people trying to take the city. But they don't know how, they don't know who the bad people are or how to get them out of the city. You say that you are the bad person. They laugh and say that while you might be the bad person, you are too small to be the bad person they were talking about. They say that you need to find someone who's bad in the city. You run inside of a house. You hide behind a wall and listen to the conversation that is happening. You bust through the door. You run out of the bushes and into the house and everyone stops talking. Hey, you've got to help us, you say. What's going on, the leader of the band says. You ask them about the bad people. There are bad people trying to take over the city. We can't get out because there are people standing on the road. They look like me, but they're much, much bigger and mean. You drink a growing potion. You drink the potion and grow to about eight feet tall. All right, I can get the leader of this band out of here. What, they say. What, the leader says in shock. If I can get you out of here, you can carry the rest of this band and their instruments over to the top of the mountain where you'll be safe. You tell the band to play music while you kill the bad people. You lead the band out of the city and to the mountains. Once there, you start killing the bad people with your axe. You kill so many that eventually nothing is left. Damn, son! You find a large cave that you think the band must be in. You go in and look around. You see blood all over the place, skeletons, rotting carcasses of animals, and other strange things. You come across the leader and a few others playing what looks to be an old-fashioned mandolin. You watch, them <laughs> you watch them play a song for a few minutes, which is very catchy. Normally you'd want to listen to the song, but there are bad people that need to die and the band needs to reach their destination. So you go back outside to look for clues to see where these villains are. You look around the area and realize that you're lost. You know that there's a large forest outside of the hills, but you are unsure which one it is. Bro, I thought we already killed all the bad people. You leave the city and sail away on a sailboat. You put on some old clothes and grab your sailboat. You figure you'll travel to the nearest kingdom to get help. You sail away from the city and into the forest. This is where we're going to stop it here. I might continue this story at a later point, um, but I think it definitely turned out interesting. I think it really cool and awesome. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.